Okay, lesson 5.4, we're gonna talk about factoring and solving polynomial equations. Now you probably learned about factoring in your Algebra 1 course, but here in Algebra 2, we're just gonna go over some different types of factoring that you may not have encountered in your Algebra 1 class. So the three types we're gonna talk about are sum and difference of cubes, okay, sum and difference of two cubes, factoring by grouping, Okay, that's when you have four terms, and then when it's in what they call the quadratic form. So we're gonna go through some introductory examples. I'll show you how to work with these, and then you'll have a chance to practice some examples on your own, and we'll go over those as well. So first things first, uh, what is the sum and difference of two cubes? Well, basically what it is is when you have a perfect cube and you're adding another perfect cube, or you have a perfect cube and you're subtracting another perfect cube. And what you wanna do is you wanna take the cube root of these quantities. If they work out to nice integer values, then what you can do is you can use this formula, a plus b, a squared minus ab plus b squared, or a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. Now that's a lot to remember, but one acronym that students oftentimes use to help remember this formula is the SOAP acronym. Same, opposite, always positive. Okay, just like SOAP, okay? So S, so if it's this adding, then you add. If you're subtracting, you subtract, it's the same. Then it's the opposite. So if you add here, you're gonna subtract here. If you subtract here, you're gonna add here. So the opposite sign. And then the last one, you can see it's always positive. It's always adding that b squared. Otherwise, you can see the terms are exactly the same. a and b, a squared, a, b, and b squared. Okay, so let's look at an example using the sum and difference of two cubes. So if we look at letter a here, notice that x cubed, this is obviously a perfect cube. It's x times x times x. Eight is a perfect cube. It's two times two times two. So now what we can see is that our a value in this formula, okay, is gonna be x, and our b value is gonna be two. We can see it's a difference of two cubes, so we're gonna to wanna to use this second one here. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna expand it. So it's gonna to expand to x minus two, x squared plus two x plus two squared, which is two times two, that's four. Now you're not gonna be able to factor this trinomial here any further. That's as far as we can go. But remember, the first step is always to do the greatest common factor when you're factoring. But if you find that you have a difference of two cubes or a sum of two cubes, just take the cube root of each of the two terms to identify your a and b value here in this formula. Let's do another example so you can see how that works. So let's look at letter b. So when you look at letter b here, you can see that 27c cubed is really like 3c, the quantity cubed. So 3c times 3c times 3c. One sometimes is often overlooked as a perfect cube, but one times one times one is gonna be one, right? So we can see our a value is 3c and our b value is one. So all we have to do now is substitute into our sum of two cubes, this top formula, and that's gonna come out to 3c plus one, so that's a plus b, a squared, which is 3c times 3c, so 3c times itself, so squaring it, that's 9c squared, minus a times b, 3c times one is 3c, plus b squared, one times one is one. So you've got the same, opposite, always positive. We're adding, so it's the same, opposite sign, always positive, and you've got it fully factored, and that's it. Now, if you were solving these equations, if it said, you know, say for example, this was equal to zero, what you would do after you factor it is you would then take each factor, each group, and you would set it equal to zero and solve. And that's how you would find your zeros, which represent the x-intercepts where a polynomial is gonna cross the x-axis. So we're gonna use that later on in this chapter as we keep uh, going through, but we're just reviewing factoring here so you have those skills to find the zeros which are our x-intercepts. Okay, now we're jumping down to uh, letter C, and here what we're talking about is factoring by grouping. So most likely you did talk about this in Algebra 1, but you know when to use factoring by grouping when you have four terms, okay? Four terms. Remember, the terms are separated by plus or minus, so it's like four groups. So you can see here we have one, two, three, four terms. What we're gonna do is we're gonna group the first two terms, and we're gonna group the last two terms, but there's really a plus sign in between here, okay? These are not multiplied together. We're just x cubed plus four x squared plus negative x minus four. I'm just grouping them into two groups, okay? Now what we do is we factor out the greatest common factor. So here you can see we can divide out an x squared out of both of these two terms. So that's gonna leave us with x plus four. Here we can factor out a negative one. So I'm just gonna factor out a negative one. That's gonna give us x plus four. If all goes well, notice what's in the parentheses. It's the exact same. See, it's x plus four. So what we can do is we can then factor out the x plus four as a greatest common factor. See, so if you 
were to divide this whole group by x plus 4, you'd be left with x squared. And if you divide this whole group by x plus 4, you're going to be left with negative 1. Now notice this is a, a difference of two squares, x squared minus 1. This is actually going to factor to x plus 1 and x minus 1. And we'll just bring down our x plus 4. So if you were to multiply all this out, you'd get back the original uh, polynomial. Okay. Now remember, with the difference of two squares, just a reminder, this is a squared minus b squared. It factors to a plus b, a minus b. Okay, so it's a sum and difference pattern. Now if this was equal to zero, then you would set each factor, each group equal to zero, make a mini equation basically, set those to zero, solve, and those are gonna be your x-intercepts where it crosses the x-axis. Okay, now for learn want to learn algebra two, Check out my Learn Algebra 2 video course for sale where we go through 85 video lessons that take you step by step by step through Algebra 2. We go through the important formulas, concepts, as well as numerous examples to help you master Algebra 2. Click the interactive card or the link in the description below to go over and check out some of the free lessons. Otherwise, let's get back into this current lesson. Okay, now for letter D and E, what we're talking about is the quadratic form. So this is a recognizing how to factor these when they're in the quote-unquote quadratic form. And I'll just give you a simple uh, example here. Say, for example, you had something like this, uh, x squared plus uh, 7x plus 12, right? We know how to factor this. This is just going to be x plus 4 times x plus 3, right? But what happens if this was x to the 40th? plus 7x to the 20th plus 12. Now what makes this in a quadratic form is, you see how this uh, middle exponent is half of this leading uh, exponent? This is gonna factor x to the 20th plus four and x to the 20th plus three. Just like if we were factoring this one up here. See how it was like x plus four, x plus three, this is the same thing. It's x to the 20th though plus four, x to the 20th plus three. Because remember, when you multiply, you're adding those exponents. That's gonna give you back the x to the 40th here. But when you do the inner and the outer, four x to the 20th, three x to the 20th, that's gonna give you seven x to the 20th. So this is what they call quadratic form. It's just like factoring a quadratic, a second degree uh, polynomial, but we're just doing it when it's a higher degree. I'll show you some examples. So let's look at letter D. When we look at this one here, it looks a lot like this formula here, a squared minus b squared, the difference of two squares. The only difference is, is this is really not like y squared, it's y to the fourth. But if we take the square root of this quantity, we get 7y squared. If we take the square root of 16, we get 4. And we just make one of these adding and one of these subtracting. This is the difference of two squares formula, the sum and difference pattern. But all I did is, see, even if I was to change this to, let's say, for example, um, uh, the 40th, this would just be 7y to the 20th and 7y to the 20th. It's just going to be half of that uh, exponent there. So let's look at letter E. Now this one, x to the 6 minus x cubed minus 12, would you know how to factor it if it was x squared minus x minus 12? You know, to kind of rewrite it like this, when this middle exponent is half of that leading exponent. Okay, so that's how you can recognize that quadratic form. But here what we're doing is we're saying what two numbers multiply to negative 12 but add to the middle coefficient negative 1, well that's going to be negative 4 and positive 3. But in this case we have x to the 6 and x cubed, so this is going to be x cubed because when you multiply, 3 plus 3 gives you x to the 6, you add the exponents. We talked about the properties of exponents earlier in this course. And then when you do the inner and the outer product, negative 4x cubed and positive 3x cubed, that gives us the negative 1x cubed, the middle term. So you can see this is really just like factoring this second degree trinomial. It's just that now we've got it to a higher degree. And again, you recognize it by this middle exponent being half of that, that leading one. So let me erase the whiteboard. I'll put up some uh, sample problems that you can uh, practice on your own, and we'll go over those so you can get some uh, additional practice. Okay, see if you can pause the video and do these practice problems on your own to get some practice and experience. Number one, it says factor 4x cubed minus 36x. So how would you do that one? How would you factor it? Well, remember, the first step in factoring always is to look for that greatest common factor, that thing that you can divide out of all the terms. And in this particular problem, it looks like we can factor out or divide out a 4x. So we can divide these both by 4x. That's going to leave us with x squared minus 9. Now with factoring, you always want to see if you can factor further. So in this case, we can see we have a difference of two squares, two perfect squares, which factors 
with the sum and difference pattern, x plus three, x minus three. I just took the square root of nine, which is three, and the square root of x squared, which is x, and we bring down that four x. Now, if this was equal to zero, right here, this quantity equal to zero, then I would set four x equal to zero, x plus three equal to zero, and x minus three equal to zero, and I would solve. But for this one, it just says factor, so we're just gonna leave it like that. Okay, try number two. 64 x cubed plus one. How would you factor that one, 64 x cubed plus one? Well, first step is look for the greatest common factor. It doesn't look like there's a greatest common factor, but it looks like we have a sum of two perfect cubes because the cube root of this quantity is actually gonna be 4x times 4x times 4x, and the cube root of one is just one. So this is our a value, this is our b value in this top formula here, the sum of two cubes. So I'm just gonna expand this out, 4x plus one, 4x squared is 16x squared, okay, that's gonna be the a squared right here, minus 4x times one, which is 4x, plus one squared, which is one. And so now we've got it factored, and I use that SOAP acronym, same, opposite, always positive. So we're adding, so it's adding, the opposite, subtracting, always positive for the last one. Okay, so let's look at number three. So x to the fourth minus x squared minus six, how would you factor that one? Well, you can see it's a trinomial. There's not a greatest common factor, but it looks like it's in the quadratic form. See how this, exponent in the middle here is half of this uh, leading terms exponent. So we're gonna factor this just like we were gonna factor x squared minus x minus six. It's the same exact way you'd factor it. x times x is x squared. What multiplies to negative six but adds to negative one, that's negative three and positive two. But because this is not x squared, it's x to the fourth, this is gonna be x squared and x squared. Notice again, when you multiply, you add, two plus two is four, and when we do the inner and the outer terms, that's gonna give us back this middle term here. Now, if this was equal to zero, we would set each group equal to zero, but in this case, it just says factor, so we've got it. Okay, so let's go to number four. See if you can do this one, 25c to the fourth minus nine d squared. Okay, so what do you think for that one? How would you factor it? Well, there's not a greatest common factor. It looks like we have a binomial, two terms, and it looks like it's a difference of two perfect squares. So when we factor this, it's gonna be five c squared times five c squared, right? Because these multiply to 25 c to the fourth. The square root of 90 squared is three d times itself, three d. One of these I'm gonna make adding, one subtracting. Now the nice thing about factoring if you distribute twice here, or FOIL, or use your box method, any technique for multiplying out these two binomials, you're gonna get back the original, so you can check your work, right? So number five, what do you think for this one? How would you factor this? So notice that we have four terms, that's interesting. So normally we have four terms we think about factoring by grouping, but it looks like we could divide all these terms by two, so we're gonna factor out a two, so that's gonna leave us with x cubed, minus uh, 2x squared plus 3x minus six. I just divided everything by two. I factored out that greatest common factor. But now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna group the first two terms and I'm gonna group the last two terms, okay? I'm gonna factor out the greatest common factor, which in this case is x squared, and in this case it's gonna be three, right? We still have that two in front. We don't wanna forget about that. But notice how there's an x minus two in common in this group and in this group, so we're gonna factor out that x minus two like a greatest common factor, or you can think about dividing this whole thing by x minus two, you'd be left with x squared. If you divide this whole group by x minus two, you'd be left with three. And again, if you FOIL this out, you're gonna get back the original, but then we have to just bring down that two, and now it's in the fully factored form. Okay, let's go to number uh, six and number seven. Here it says factor and solve. See how these are equal to zero, so that's kind of you know, when it's not equal to zero, usually it just it says factor, you're not gonna really be solving anything, but this is um, a trinomial, and we wanna find out what values of x are gonna make this equal to zero. These are our x-intercepts uh, when we graph our polynomial. So the first step with factor, remember, is the greatest common factor. So here I can factor out a two x out of all of these terms, okay? Now you can check your work by distributing that two x to see if you've done it correctly. But you wanna see, first look at the numbers, I can divide all these by two, and then I look at the variables, it looks like they all have at least one x in common, so that's how I factored out the two x. Now the next step is, hmm, let's see, what multiplies to negative 15, but uh, adds to the middle coefficient two, 
that's going to be positive 5 and negative 3. I'm going to bring down the 2x. Now it's fully factored, but now what we want to do is we want to set each group equal to 0. So we have 2x equals 0, x plus 5 is equal to 0, and x minus 3 is equal to 0. If I divide by 2, x is equal to 0. If I subtract 5, x is equal to negative 5. And if I add 3, x is equal to positive 3. And all this, again, represents is where the graph is going to be crossing the x-axis. It's going to be crossing here at 0. It's going to be crossing over here at negative 5. And it's going to be crossing over here at 3. The leading coefficient is positive. So that means it's going to be going up to the right. It's an odd degree, which means it's going to go down to the left, the opposite direction. And it's going to look something like that. So we're getting a better idea about how to graph these polynomials by finding the zeros and incorporating the end behavior, which we learned in a previous lesson. Okay, last example for this lesson. See if you can factor this one. c to the fourth plus 5c squared minus 36 equals 0. What do you think for that one? Well, there's not a greatest common factor, right? It is a trinomial. It's not a quadratic, though. It's a higher degree. See, this is not uh, c squared. It's c to the fourth. But we notice that that middle exponent is half of that leading exponent. So that tells us this is in the quadratic quote unquote form, right? So when we factor this, it's going to be c squared times c squared. But what multiplies to negative 36 but adds to 5, that's going to be positive 9 and negative 4. Now, with factoring, you always want to see if you can factor further, right? Keep going. We notice this is a difference of two squares. Okay, so this is going to factor to c plus 2 and c minus 2. This one, we really can't factor over the set of real numbers. So now we've factored as much as we can, but we have to solve. So we're going to set each group, each factor, equal to 0. If we set c plus 2 equal to 0, that one's pretty easy. We just subtract 2. We can see that c equals negative 2. If we set c minus 2 equal to 0, if we add 2 to both sides, we can see that c is equal to positive 2. But for this one, c squared plus 9 equals 0. We subtract 9 from both sides. It gives us negative 9. If we take the square root, we get two answers, positive or negative. Remember, as soon as you take the square root of both sides, you get the two answers, plus or minus. And the square root of uh, negative 9 is going to give you 3i. Because square root of 9 is 3, but the square root of negative 1 is i for imaginary, right? So now we've got our four solutions. The graph's going to cross over here at negative 2 and positive 2. But with the imaginary zeros, it's not going to be crossing the x-axis at 3i or negative 3i. That's not going to be on our, our real axis here on the x-axis. So that concludes this lesson. If you need to review the different types of factoring, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next lesson.